All right, so now let's talk about a couple of derived units. So what do we mean by derived units? Well, derived units are any units that are based on fundamental measurements. Okay, volume is a good example. Okay, if you want to know the volume uh, that something occupies, such as the volume of this cube or even the volume of this um, smaller cube that makes up the larger one, what do you do? You can measure the distance of its length and its width and its height. Okay, you're measuring distance and you're calculating or deriving volume. Okay. Now, um, since the um, another unit, of course, is milliliter. Milliliter for volume is derived or comes from the volume that a space of one centimeter cubed takes up. So one milliliter, one milliliter is the definition of one centimeter cubed. Okay, so one, anytime you see a centimeter cubed, it's, uh, you're going to use interchangeably with one milliliter. Okay, the SI unit for volume is meters cubed. Most of the time, we're going to be using milliliters, a very common term in the chemical laboratory, or liters, but uh, milliliters pops up a lot. Okay, one of the things we're going to have to figure out is the conversion factors for volume. Okay, um, we can see that here's one, one meter cubed equals 10 to the six centimeters cubed. Okay, uh, one way you can just memorize these equalities, uh, but you can also calculate them based on our knowledge from the prefix multipliers that we learned. We know that in one meter, there is 10 to the second centimeters. Okay, we know that. So from that, we can derive our volume quality. Okay, if we're going to cube volume, and that's what we're doing, we're measuring length times width times height, we're going to cube these values. All you have to do is cube both sides, and you'll get your quality for volume. Okay, factor in this cube. So one cubed is cu one. A meter cubed is a meter cubed. Okay, 10 to the second cubed. Remember that if you're multiplying exponents, uh, you can just add them. So 10 to 10 to the second cubed is 10 to the sixth, two times three. Excuse me, multiply them. And then centimeter cubed is cubed. Centimeters cubed. Okay. So from our prefix multiplier equality, we can always calculate the um, volume equality. Just cube everything. Okay. Another uh, derived unit is density. Now, density is the definition of density is just its ratio of mass to volume. Okay, so we can come up with a quick uh, equation for density. Density is the mass of the substance divided by the volume. Okay, so if you're looking at the units for density, mass over volume will give you any units that you measure for mass over the units that you measure for volume. Typically, you see that uh, for solids, densities are reported in grams per centimeters cubed. Uh, liquids, grams per milliliter, just because, you know, in theory, you can measure solids, measuring the length times width times height. Liquids, you're going to use volumetric uh, glassware a little bit more often. But remember, one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter, so they're basically saying the same thing. Gases, because they take up so much more volume, you often see those typically reported as grams per liter because they take up so much more volume than a milliliter. Okay? Um, typically, the density of solids are greater than the density of their liquids. If you melt a solid, its um, density uh, goes down. Uh, and density of liquids is much, much, much greater than the density of gases. Uh, one of the most one of the biggest exceptions, of course, is water. The density of the solid is less than the density of liquid, and that is, of course, why ice cubes float, okay? Or ice on a lake floats because its density is less than uh, that of its solid. Very important fact or property of density, okay? Um, very important that density is an extensive, or excuse me, intensive property. It's based on volume and mass, which are both extensive properties. 
But we know that if the volume goes up, of course, that's caused by mass going up. Or if you add material, mass goes up, of course, it's going to take up more space. Volume goes up. Since they go up or down as a ratio, density stays the same. So density, because it's an intensive variable, can be used to identify materials. Okay. Density, however, is temperature dependent. Okay. Um, generally, um, as something heats up, it takes up more volume. We saw that in the example of the thermometer, the transfer of kinetic energy to the ethanol inside a glass thermometer causes it to expand, took up more room in our thermometer. So when you see uh, densities listed, you typically have it associated with a, a temperature. Uh, very important, density of water at around room temperature, and that's what we're going to use, but specifically at 4 degrees Celsius, it is 1.00 grams per milliliter. Okay, we're going to use that density quite a bit this uh, semester. Uh, you can see that uh, density is very specific to the uh, individual species. That's why it can be used to identify. Mercury is very, very dense, as well as lead, uh, whereas aluminum is much less dense than those other two metals. Okay. Now, of course, we saw that um, density is a ratio of mass over volume. So, like water, we saw that there's one gram per milliliter. So you can use, think of that as an equality. You can also use that equality as a conversion factor. Okay. So, uh, here's an example of using that. Okay, the mass of uh, fuel in a jet must be calculated for weight measures. Okay, if a 747 has 173,231 liters of jet fuel, we want they want to know how much uh, mass that volume of fuel is using. To do that, we can convert mass to volume or volume to mass using the density, which is listed here as a conversion factor. Okay. So think about 0.768 grams per centimeter. So that means if you have 0.768 grams of jet fuel, you have one centimeter cubed of jet fuel. Okay. So from that, one equality, just like all the others, we can write two conversion factors. 0.768 grams over one centimeter cubed, or one centimeter cubed, over 0.768 grams. Okay, so let's try to answer this question. First things first, I'm going to write down the units I want for my final answer, which we're looking for the mass in kilograms. So I'm going to write kilograms here. Okay, I'm going to be looking for the number of kilograms in 173,231 liters. Okay, so if we want to set up a, a game plan, we're going to go from liters, eventually, all the way to kilograms. Okay, now I don't have a conversion factor for liters, kilograms, but since this is volume and this is mass, I know that I'm going to need density. Density is listed in grams per centimeters cubed, so with a few short conversion factors, I know I can go from liters to centimeters cubed, right? I know that I have a prefix multiplier and conversion factor for liters to milliliters, I know that one milliliter equals centimeters cubed, so that will be an easy conversion factor. And then I can convert centimeters cubed to grams using density. And then grams to kilograms, just one conversion factor needed there, again from our prefix multipliers. Okay, first things first, let's convert liters to milliliters. I know that in one liter I have 10 to the third milliliters. Okay. I will cancel out my liters. Uh, I know that the definition of a milliliter is one centimeter cubed, so one centimeter cubed, one milliliter. And then I'm going to use my density, 0 0.768. I want centimeters cubed on the bottoms, grams on top. So I'm going to use that conversion factor. So 0 0.768 grams. For one centimeter cubed, my milliliters already canceled out, my centimeters canceled out, and then finally, in one kilogram, I know I have 10 to the third grams. 
grams cancel out. Okay, so punch this in my calculator. Well, before I do that, just make sure my kilograms are the units I want. Everything else cancels out. Great. 173,231 times 1,000. All ones times 0.768 divided by 1,000. And that will give me an answer of 133,041 kilograms. Of course, I'm going to have to consider my significant figures. So, if I have started out with 173,231, I have six significant figures here. Um, quality, equality, no significant figure considerations here. Density, because it is a measurement, it's based on measurements. We have to measure the density, measure the mass, measure the volume. We do have to consider the amount of significant figures here, and this is, uh, of course, three sig figs uh, quality here. So I'm going to, have to cut this down to three sig figs, the least number of significant figures I have. Okay, so I'm going to drop these, and that will be 133,000 kilograms of jet fuel. Uh, these are a little ambiguous, so I can cut this off into 1.33 times 10 to the fifth kilograms in scientific notation, three sig figs. That's my final answer. Okay, remember that um, something that we're going to need to continually use this semester is the idea of dimensional analysis or the use of conversion factors to give us our final answer. Okay, uh, a good way to do this is again to come up with our game plan or our conceptual plan, start with our given value work our way to what we want to find using some conceptual plan. Okay, And remember that we can always go to our final units by making sure whatever units we started with cancel out by the use of a conversion factor. Sometimes you need one conversion factor, sometimes you need two, sometimes you need ten. But if you make sure your units cancel out, um, you're always going to set up this problem correctly, correctly. And as long as you punch it in your calculator co correctly, uh, you're going to get the right answer.